A major redevelopment project that could have invigorated the heart of Muskoka is now on hold. For nearly 25 years, the site of a former sanatorium by Lake Muskoka has been sitting vacant. The town of Gravenhurst and a China-based company were hoping to turn it into a boarding school. But talk has stalled after two years of negotiation and the town has withdrawn its support from the project, citing obstruction from the province. To explain, uh, Glenn Davies, the chief administrative officer of Gravenhurst, joins me on the phone now. Good morning. Good morning, Wei. Uh, Before we talk about the proposal, can you just give us a a brief history uh, of the property and its location? Uh, the, the property itself is about 72 acres on uh, Lake Skoka. It, it's on the edge of the urban part of Cravenhurst, so it's a well-situated property, very, uh, a very ideal location for a school. Um, and uh, uh, as has been indicated, the property itself is, uh, has quite a lengthy history, but uh, in the last 25 years, it has sat uh, uh, vacant and, and unproductive. Why has it just been sitting there abandoned? Um, 1990s, uh, there was a change of public policy. Uh, deinstitutionalization was occurring at the time. The, uh, uh, the folks that were resident or patients there uh, uh, became uh, um, uh, serviced in the community, and the province at that time closed the facility, and it's remained uh, padlocked ever since. Mm. So Gravenhurst was looking at a, a, a number of options. What were your hopes with this? What, what, why did the town like this, this Chinese proposal? Um, well, the the town did go through quite a uh, an international search process to uh, solicit interest from uh, basically private developers who had both the financial means and the development ex- expertise to uh, uh, to do something with the property. And the something that the town uh, and the community has been looking for is uh, something consistent with the institutional use that's been there for over a hundred years. So. Uh, teaching institution, a uh, hospital, uh, that kind of thing uh, that would produce uh, year-round good jobs, uh, but fit into the community in a way that uh, it has it has had a presence for over a hundred years. The proposal that came forward for Maple Leaf School Systems and their partner uh, fit that bill uh, completely. Uh, They had the financial means and the uh, experience, uh, which meant that there would be no requirement for uh, public funding, and it would have been uh, a a catalyst for some economic development for the area. Yeah, and what were some of those ripple effects you were hoping for? Well, by by virtue of remembering that the town lost uh, 300 jobs when the province closed the hospital in in the uh, 90s, there was an opportunity here to create uh, uh, almost as many jobs again uh, on a permanent basis, professional, high-paying, uh, year-round jobs. Uh, that by itself means new families, uh, houses being purchased. Uh, there would be uh, upwards of 1,500 students there most of the year. They and their visiting parents would be buying commodities uh, in the community. It all would contribute to a trickle-down effect that would have a benefit for the community. Of course, though, the land wasn't owned by the town. The land was owned by the province. So how how is Gravenhurst going to secure it? That's been uh, a major factor, of course. Uh, The province has not developed the property since they closed it. Uh, Approximately two years ago, uh, town council uh, took the initiative to say, let's see what the town itself could do as a catalyst. Uh, to promote some kind of development there that would be consistent with our vision. Uh, The town itself doesn't have the financial wherewithal, the expertise, nor the risk tolerance to take on that size of a project. But we did think that we could play a brokering or catalytic role by uh, dealing with the province, acquiring the land and the developer at the other side, and brokering a deal that would allow the project to, to uh, proceed without putting the town in any kind of financial risk. Right, so you're just being the middleman, basically, uh, on the deal. So why then has the town decided, you know what, we don't want to be part of the process now? Um, I, 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 would, I would say it isn't a matter of not wanting to be, uh, but after two years of negotiating, uh, it's clear that the, the, the model that we proposed the, that I just described was not going to work. Uh, policies within the province were not going to allow the deal to proceed in an economic 
or I should say a commercially viable way. Um, uh, we've explored all of the bureaucratic uh, 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 processes available to us in terms of negotiating with the appropriate individuals. Uh, the mayor has reached out politically to see if there were other solutions if the policies precluded uh, the, the model we, we had entertained. Uh, all of those have come to naught, um, and so the logical conclusion is if, if, the, if the province is actually going to sell the property, we should probably now step aside that the ability to negotiate our model, our deal is not in the cards. Uh, council decided we should step aside and let the province go out into the market and, and uh, uh, sell it in that fashion. And, and what was the obstacle, as you understand it then, from the province's side? Yes, as, as we understand it, and I, I, I think this is accurate, the province was looking for conditions in uh, the deal, the uh, flow through to the to the developer, that would have precluded the developer from making capital profits off of the land for a 20-year period. Mm. Um, and while the uh, developer and the town were certainly uh, supportive of and willing to sign agreements that would have precluded flipping or, or uh, speculation, mm -hmm. um, the whole premise of bringing a private developer to, to play putting their capital at risk, putting their uh, uh, money at risk. Um, in, in today's market, that means that they, they're looking for an upside, which is the ability to generate some kind of profits, and the, and the agreement wouldn't have, wouldn't, would not have allowed that to happen. Uh, and uh, quite not surprisingly, the uh, developer was not prepared to uh, 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 close the deal at the other end. The, and that doesn't make you suspicious at all. I mean, what's wrong with an anti-flipping clause? Because, you know, they, they would be given this without a, it being put out to tender. They would have the ability to buy this property. They're promising the school, but what would preclude them from just, you know, building condos instead, you know, and flipping it. Yeah, I, I, I quite agree, um, and, I, and the developer agreed. Uh, w the developer and the town um, uh, agreed that, that, that there, there was every opportunity and a willingness to sign an agreement uh, that included anti-flipping uh, terminology. That That is that uh, if something to the effect that if the land were acquired, and not developed uh, as uh, presented in the proposal within uh, a, a period of time, say five years, that the property would revert back to the province. Um, so an anti-flipping concept was well supported by the town and the developer. Uh, and, um, uh, and I might add, the developer believed that they were paying uh, appraised market value for the property. They weren't getting a special deal. Um, it's the ability to generate a normal profit uh, out of a business transaction that they, that they were concerned about and uh, not the anti-flipping. No, it, as a public transaction, if it were simply acquired on a speculative basis, um, perhaps broken up into smaller lots with no improvements added and then sold uh, bit by bit to make a profit, uh, the developer uh, was prepared to sign an agreement that would have precluded that. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Glenn Davies, thank you very much for your time this morning. Wait, well, thank you very much for having me on. All right, bye-bye. Bye now. That was Glenn Davies, the CAO of the town of Gravenhurst.